Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now before we go on to the, with today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? I told you yesterday why it's important. We do so. Jesus said we should ask for our daily bread. So are you ready? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in jesus name amen praise god yes i was sharing something um, yesterday in our team scripture for the month is ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 and he's speaking here he says for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them now i remember i was telling you yesterday the importance of knowing the scripture by revelation not by intellectual uh, prowess or intel intellectual studying but by revelation so i was bringing to to our understanding this this is a little apostle wrote to the efficient church the the people of Ephesus. He necessarily wasn't thinking of the, those in Nigeria. You understand what I'm saying? Or other parts of the world. But his focus was on those in Ephesus. But how relevant is this statement, for example, or this letter um, to us today? It's relevant because um, Apostle Paul was writing to believers. So if there were believers in Ephesus, then there is something we as believers in, in different parts of the world can benefit from. Now that's to the extent to which we receive this letter and then we read it today. Like the Bible says, these things are written for our learning. See, so you read a statement like this, it says, for we are his workmanship. Now, is it just the people of Ephesus that are his workmanship? Whose workmanship? God's workmanship is what he's referring to here. Praise God. Now, because if you read from verse, let's start from verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any, anyone should boast. So we're saved not because we were too special or we did something special. They say we're saved by grace. And it was true faith. What does it mean true faith? Through our response to the word of God. See, when we got saved, God spoke and we respond to his voice. We responded to his voice. He, we heard his voice and we responded to his voice. Nobody got saved by themselves. That's why I always tell people, you begin to hear the voice of God before you even got saved. It is that voice that you heard that led you to salvation. If you didn't hear the voice of God, then you didn't get saved because it has to be by faith. If you were just responding to a pastor's threat or the fear of the message a pastor preached, that's why even as ministers, we should be careful how we teach or how we preach what we call the gospel. I told you last week, there, are, there there's, there's the, a lot of things people preach today is not the gospel. The gospel is very simple. God wants to bless you. See, Jesus simply said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And the gospel that was preached to Abraham, according to Galatians 3, he says the, 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 he preached the gospel to Abraham saying, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So the gospel is simple. God is thinking blessing on his mind. And he wants to extend the blessing to all the families of the earth. And you are one of the families of the earth. So when we bring the gospel to you, that's what we're bringing. And when, we, when you receive the gospel, it's not just because of what we say. It's because of what you hear in your heart. There is a witness in your heart. We're saying that witness in your heart telling you that what these people are saying is true is what you now respond to. Now, because you heard it in your heart, even though we come tomorrow to say what we preached to you the other day is not right to you to look at us and tell us, no, well, I don't know what you're talking about, but I know what I heard and I respond, responded to what I heard in my heart. 
See, so we are saved by grace and through faith. And that non, not of ourselves. So it wasn't you that just said, I'm tired of this life. I want to give my life to Christ. No, it wasn't you that just woke up and felt that way. There was a ministration in your heart. And you were only responding to that ministration. It says, it is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. So it's not how far you trekked to the church. To give your heart to Christ. It's not how you, 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 you knelt and crawled on your knees before you gave your heart to Christ. No, sir. Not of any works. So nobody can boast and say, oh, my salvation is unique, more, more unique than your own. No, it's not of works. So no man can boast. Well, what it is, what is it? We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do those good works. And, and part of those good works is receiving salvation. You see that now? Receiving salvation. So God preordained for us to receive salvation. Not everybody have this preordination. You know that, right? By now you should if you've been listening to me. Not everyone has this um, preordination. Now, you, you read in, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, it says, The Lord added daily to the church such as should be saved. Let me read a scripture to you. Acts chapter, I think it's in chapter 13. Magadadada. Verse, Acts chapter 13 and verse 48. It said, Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. Take note of this. It said, When the Gentiles heard this, glad the Gentiles, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. But look at what he says next. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. In chapter 2, it says, the Lord added those who, are, who shall who, who are, um, added daily to the church, such as should be saved. Now you find here, he's saying something else. As many as had been appointed to eternal life, they are the ones who believe. Even though many were glad and responded, you know what I mean by that? They, they were glad and they glorified the word of the Lord. But glorifying the word of the Lord doesn't necessarily mean you will get saved. We are saved by appointment. It is not, you know, that's why as preachers, you don't count how many people turn up at the altar. You don't count that. Why? The fact that they turn up to the altar. Hey, no, no, no. They confess Jesus. That doesn't get you saved. Yes. No, the Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and, 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 and believe with thy heart. See, it's easy to, to, to open your mouth and say, Jesus is Lord. It's very easy. But you see that part where it says, And believe in your heart. It's not a question of, Do you believe or not? No, sir. If you believe, your life will show. Because you're, you're ruled by the things you believe. If I tell you there's a lion outside your house, what would happen to you if you believe that story? You won't come out of your house. If I tell you there's a lion in your house, and all of us agree, all of us know that we should dread um, the presence of a lion. And you finish hearing that, say, wow, are you serious? Okay, you know. And then you, you continue, get ready, dress up, and then just carry your bag and start stepping out normally. One will look at you and like, did you hear what I said? Yeah, I heard what you said. What did I say? Say there's a lion outside. Uh -huh. And you're going out. Hey, I'm going out. I'm not scared of lion. I'm not, I'm not scared of... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Now, that person simply said, I don't believe you. It's as simple as that. So when you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be persuaded. And it will show in... in, in, in now, that, that thinking... 
that God raised Jesus from the dead is not a convincing of any man. No man will convince you for that. That is a conviction that only the Holy Spirit can bring to you. So when, when we start explaining by too many words, you know, Jesus died, they, they beat him up, and they're like, oh, he suffered, though. Yes, he suffered, and he suffered for you. Hey, yeah, if he suffered for me, ah, is it not better I give my life to him? It doesn't mean the person is saved. There is a conviction that comes in your heart that makes you know beyond any doubt in you that God raised Jesus from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead. Do you know what that means? If it was God that raised Jesus from the dead, he could raise Jesus from the dead. How much more can he do in my life? So the believing that God raised Jesus from the dead is not necessarily because of Jesus. It's because of you. If he raised Jesus from the dead, then he will raise me up also. That's why I believe in him. That's why I have faith in him. Not just that the, the, the confession that you believe that God raised Jesus to so say after me, I believe, I believe with all my heart, with all my heart, Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. Therefore, I'm saved. E, you're not saved by that. And I said, that's, that's what I was explaining to you yesterday. It's not intellectual. Someone said, okay, the Bible says, if thou shalt confess and believe in your heart, then you say, okay, I have confessed and I believe in my heart. Okay, so where is the result of that salvation? See? Where is the fruit of that salvation? In Matthew chapter 3, Jesus, John preaching told the Pharisees, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Let's see. If you are saved, where is the fruit? Because salvation is not just that you say, I believe. No, there is the Spirit that baptizes you into Christ. If you are saved, have you been baptized into Christ? That is what really shows that you are saved. Not the going out for the altar call. Not the repeating what the pastor has said. That is your part. But then the Holy Spirit does his part by baptizing you, swallowing you up in him. Now, that is an experience you cannot, you, you cannot deny. When that happens in your life, you can't deny it. You can't be telling yourself, now that you're saved, do you feel anything? No, I don't feel anything. Do you feel different? No, I don't feel different. You're not saved. Ah, it's salvation by feeling. Listen to me. When there is a change in your life, you will feel something in your heart. You will know something has taken place. And you walk up to that, live the normal life that you used to live before, and you find out that you've been disabled from living that life. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, what about those who don't say, they didn't get saved. It's as simple as that. You, you went to the altar call today, and, and by in the morning, and by evening time, you're out there smoking again with your friends and, 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 and doing all the stuff you normally do. And someone say, hey, see that boy, he got saved in church today. It's just that God is working on his salvation. You know, he has to now learn the word of God and grow. He didn't get saved. It's as simple as that. Nothing happens to him. And this might sound, ah, but that's not. Hey, this is the truth I'm telling you. Those who got saved knew it in themselves that something has happened. So the guy finished service. Maybe he went out for the altar call. He goes back home. He knows something different has happened. He may not be able to explain it, but he knows something different has happened. The friends come and say, hey, let's go out together. Oh, oh, we're going, we're going. And then he gets dressed and as he's about to walk the house, he realizes, where am I even going to? I'm not saying he, he's remembering the pastor's words. Say, don't follow bad friends again. No. And I say, hey, pastor says, no, I'm not following. No, he just realized that, where am I going to? Or maybe he's, he was able to make it to the place and then he gets to the bar where they normally hang out and everybody's smoking there and suddenly he felt everything here is poisonous. He just feels that way. 
And then like, hey, I, I need to go, please. Are, are you okay? Um, I, I just need to leave. Are you sure? Are you? He said, no, 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 I'm, I'm fine. But I just need to leave. And then he goes back. He's the one that will be wondering, what's going on in here? What's going on? Oh, let me go see that. Let me go see my girlfriend. You know, he said, hey, I, I, I feel somehow. Let me come see you. You know, spend time with you. And then he goes there. He sees the girlfriend and he doesn't know what to say. He doesn't know what to do. Hey, are you hungry? Um, I'm not really hungry. I think I ate. Like, let me get you something now. Well, okay. Hey, I mean, come on, cheer up. Uh, uh, something is. Uh, he he can't explain it. And then he goes back home. He said, you know what? Let me just go back home. Are you sure? Are you sure everything is okay? Yeah, let me just go back home. He gets back home. Why he's wondering what is happening to me? Then there is an urge to pray. He said, let me just, let me just pray. He goes on his knees and then he's praying. And he, he may even start speaking in other tongues. What's going on? That's what happens to most of us. You're wondering what's, what's, what's going on. You open your mouth to pray, let go, read this, kill a bra. Ah, ah, ah. This thing is so fluent. This thing is so normal. It might not be fluent at first. You may not even speak in tongues at first, but it's good you do. If you don't, it's not because of the Holy Spirit, it's because of you. But you just find out that something is just not connecting with, with your normal self before. And that's how you start your journey into God. Praise God. What is happening to you? The Holy Spirit has separated you. He has baptized you and separated you from the world. So you see all those things in you. Now that's how you begin to know the power of the Holy Spirit in your physical body. And your mind. That's how you begin to learn that there is power. What you have just received carries weight. It carries power. And that is the power we call the power of salvation. You can't just be normal and then the next thing someone is now teaching you, no, ah, I saw you at that bar. Yes, what were you doing there? Hey, I just went to hang out with my no now. Don't you know you are saved? Nah, because you are saying you don't go to places and say, eh. Ah, but what I tell my friends now, no, no, just tell them that you, you now belong to Jesus. So, hey guys, I belong to Jesus, so I can't be hanging out with you again. No, what has happened? You're just switching bad friends for good friends. That's not salvation. When salvation takes place in you, you will be excited to go see your friends. The moment you get up to go, every excitement disappears. You will be wondering what's going on. Then the hunger for God's word now begins. You, you, you just want to go to church again. You, you'll be the one asking, ah, is there no church tomorrow? You say, no, there's no church. Ah, when is there, is in, uh, our next meeting is in three days. Ah, it's far now. It's far. Can't we have service tomorrow? What's the matter? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just want more of God. Ah, ah, that one is saved. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What's going on? Because you did not get into this thing by yourself. He was the one who walked you. He, you are his workmanship. He created you for good works, not for bad works. Now, that's the reason you find out that you cannot easily continue to do bad works. You can't. Why? Because you were born for good works. So your life is just going in the direction of good works. You are just moving in the direction of good works. Someone comes to you and says, hey, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Hey, your old friends come and say, ah, let's go hang out. Ah, guy, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't. Ah, why now? Since you started going to church, you've been behaving strange. And maybe you should come and join me in church to see. Ah, leave that in, leave that in. No, seriously, why don't you join me in church? Uh, so you mean you have joined these born again people? Well, I don't know, but something is happening inside me and I like it. <laughs> yeah, because you like it. I pray for you today. For adventure, you really have not been saved and you're listening to me. Let the truth about salvation envelop you right now. 
Let the Holy Spirit fill your life right now, even as he baptizes you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive the life of God in you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.